we start a discussion on an issue making headlines. North Korea's recent stream of sharp rhetoric and threats towards the South came to a head earlier this week when the North blew up the inter Korean contact office. The regime has already rejected the idea of talking it out with an envoy from the South, only churning out more and more threats to take further military action. And it is always very hard to read what's going on inside the regime with the limited information that we have. But many do suspect that it's going through a particularly difficult time, leading it to lash out against South Korea. To discuss just what is going on and what North Korea is hoping to gain, and whether Seoul and Washington will stand for it. I'm joined by Raymond Pacheco Pardo, Reader of International Relations at King's College London and Chair of the Korea Foundation at the Freedom University of Brussels, and former Lieutenant General of the Republic of Korea Army, Ton Im Bum, who is also the Commander of the Special Warfare Command. Well, my first question goes to you, Dr. Pacheco Pardo. What do you think has caused this recent flare-up of verbal abuse and aggression towards the South? And what do you think North Korea is trying to get South Korea to do? Yeah, this seems to be driven by domestic politics, really. I, I think one of the main reasons is that North Korea has actually failed. Uh, engagement with uh, US President Donald Trump has not brought the removal of sanctions. And without sanctions removal, there is not going to be investment on North Korea. It is as simple as that. So there's this big failure. It seems to me also that uh, this process has been driven by uh, Kim Jong-un, who, who recently has been promoted within the North Korean regime. So it seems that it is also a case of uh, upgrading and reinforcing her credentials as someone who can be tough on South Korea when necessary. Well, we definitely have heard a lot from Kim Yo-jong very recently. That's Kim Jong-un's younger Jong sister, right? Well, General Chun, Kim Yo-jong, she has been very vocal in recent weeks. And while we haven't much, um, we haven't really heard much from her brother. So what do you think this actually tells us about her position in the regime? Do you think she's solidifying her sta status as the regime's number two? Well, there's no doubt that she's acting like the number two person in North Korea. So I think that's something that we can, that's self-evident. Whether she is the, within the succession line is still up for debate. But I think, despite a lot of uh, people who uh, think otherwise, that she may end up being the successor by default. Another interesting point to take is what's happening with her brother, uh, Kim Jong-un. So he has not been seen for another couple of weeks. And what is for sure is that his public activity has reduced. So it's, uh, I think it's credible to assume that there's been a change in his status, most probably health-wise, and he is reducing his uh, activity. And probably his sister is taking some of that load off. So uh, to me, I feel that there's, uh, there's a change in the North Korean leadership that, that we, we must be aware of and that we need to be mentally and uh, all around prepared for. And as you said, there's a lot of speculation, a lot of guesswork going on as to what Kim Jong-un has been up to recently and why he's keeping such a low profile. And the same question goes to you, Dr. Pacheco Pardo. What do you think is really going on with the Kim siblings? Uh, obviously, we, we have known, as you were saying, what's going on inside the regime. Uh, I, I think it's uh, clear that uh, Kim, uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, sister, uh, Kim Yo-chong, is being uh, elevated as someone who is important within the regime, uh, not only within the, the Politburo, but someone who can actually uh, take decisions, uh, lead North Korean policy, as we see when it comes to South Korea. Uh, we don't know the health status of uh, Kim Jong-un, but it might be also that uh, Kim Jong-un wants to reserve himself for summits and important meetings, and he wants to, to leave the day-to-day -day run of certain issues like relations with South Korea uh, to somebody else. He wouldn't be the only politician, if we want to call him politician, but he wants to save uh, himself for the big events and wants some of the people to get their hands dirty, so to speak, when it comes to the day-to-day -day management of relations with other countries and day-to-day -day management uh, of other issues. Well, what seems clear for now is that we'll be hearing a lot more from his younger sister. And General Chan, North Korea told the South not to even bother sending an envoy to Pyongyang. And it's actually even um, insulted President Moon Jae-in, which pe many people thought they would actually never do. 
Don't you think by doing this move, by closing themselves off, aren't they just shooting themselves in the foot? Um, what do you think is their strategy here? Well, North Korean strategy is quite simple and quite consistent, and it's brinkmanship. So first thing they do is they create a crisis. Secondly, they blame it on South Korea or the United States or whoever. And then uh, they will uh, set uh, the uh, preconditions for dialogue in principle, of course. And then they will delay and draw out the negotiations. And then they will blame South Korea and others for this delay. And then they will set up more conditions. And then they go back to uh, the crisis stage. So it's old style brinkmanship here. So we, we're now at the uh, crisis and uh, blaming stage. And I believe that they've just given us an inkling of what they want, which is their conditions. Number one, they want us to apologize for the uh, leaflets. Uh, they want us to cut off ties with the United States. And they want uh, North-South inter-Korean uh, exchange. Uh, they probably know that this is uh, far-fetched, but these are the initial conditions. So we're seeing the old North Korean playbook. And uh, I'm very disappointed that they're going back to their old ways. I had really given them the benefit of the doubt, them being the new Kim leadership, that they would be different. And I'm just hoping and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that uh, they will still be able to see that their old tactics will not work. Well, General Chan, North Korea actually said that it will uh, resume military drills near the military demarcation line. What would this look like and how big of a threat would this pose to the South Korean side? So what they uh, said that they will re re resume training and other activity along the DMZ and the northern limit line, the NLL. So this has been going on for seven decades uh, along this area, which is no new situation for the South Korean military. What will be new is that we've had a two-year lull in these kind of activities along the DMZ. So one decision that the South Koreans need to make is, are we going to do the same thing? I don't think we should jump into that too quickly, but you know, uh, there are many uh, opinions in South Korea. And uh, what that does is it escalates the tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Secondly, when the North Koreans do this, one of the things that they do or will have to do is they will have to open their gun ports along the shorelines of the Western Sea. And when they do this, uh, our ships will have to be prepared to uh, be ready. And it's not just our ships, it will be our own shore batteries and whoever that is related to these activities that will be ready. So again, tensions will arise. When you have thousands of people and thousands of artillery pieces and other uh, military equipment uh, at a jumpy situation, when tensions are high, there is always room for unintended incidents to happen along uh, what is it, nearly 200 miles uh, area. So that is the real uh, danger in it, and not, not just the North Korean activity. Well, this time around, the Moon administration has responded in a firmer way than before and, and has uh, sent Lee Dorn to Washington to speak with Stephen Began, I believe. Well, Dr. Pacheco Pardo, do you think the North will eventually back down or agree to some kind of dialogue? Uh, well, I agree with uh, General Chun that this is uh, the old uh, North Korean uh, playbook. I, I think that North Korea wants to have a, a dialogue uh, clearly with the United States. He wants to resume diplomacy with the United States, but this is extremely unlikely to happen before the November presidential election taking place there. And I would assume they want dialogue with South Korea, but they want more. Uh, obviously, they want uh, investment uh, from South Korea. They want trade taking place. Their resumption of railroad links, for, links, for example. Uh, and this is not going to happen while the sanctions regime uh, is in place. Uh, so yes, I would expect that at some point both Koreas will uh, sit down again and talk to each other, but we might have to wait uh, for some move on the US-North Korea front this time because South Korea, uh, the Moon administration clearly is not going to breach the sanctions regime for the sake of uh, inter-Korean cooperation. And I actually think that North Korea understands this. 
Well, General Chan, the same go question goes to you. Do you think North Korea is really going to back down? And what actions do you hope to see from the governments of South Korea and the United States? Well, uh, the initial response, the strong, strong response from the Moon administration came as a relief to me because I believe that uh, we need to stand strong. The North Koreans, uh, Kim family, seems to misunderstand our willingness for peace as weakness. So I really uh, was relieved to see the strong uh, response. On the other hand, um, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, uh, the North Koreans might still not get the message. And I'm, I'm, as a Korean, I'm hoping that they are watching this program and I beg them to stop this because this is not the old Korea that they've been dealing with. Uh, this is a far more open democratic country with a uh, wide spectrum of opinion. And whatever they think the South Korean military uh, is, we're not weaklings. If they provoke, we will respond very strongly. So stop here. We can negotiate. The Moon administration is willing to negotiate and talk, and they can have a lot of what they want. So. Uh, they should stop now and uh, resume talking with the uh, South as well as the United States. Well, we've had a lot of dialogue, but as you mentioned, sir, hopefully they will start listening as well. This is where we're going to have to wrap up the discussion today. But thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Raymond Pacheco Pardo in London and retired Lieutenant General Tony Bum in Seoul. Thank you for having me. This is also where we wrap up the show for the week. We'll be back on this we'll be back at the same time on Monday in Korea. Have a lovely weekend wherever you are. Goodbye.